will be talking about uh, um, how to stop SEO clients and prospects from sucking up your time and will to live. Let me make sure that we that we are working. I, I believe we are. Uh, let me just go in here and check it out. Uh, this is one of the biggest complaints I hear when people tell me, "Oh, I don't want to do, I don't want to do clients," um, or if they're having any issues with with clients. Um, uh, oh, hey Rob, how's it going? If they're having issues with clients um, or they're saying, I don't want to do clients, this is often one of the, the complaints I hear. <clears throat> but the good news is that it doesn't have to be this way. Uh, and I actually enjoy running my agency and I wouldn't say that I am like a super people person. Um, and, you know, there's I have a few things that I say and a few things that I kind of look out for um, that hint at uh, that, that either set clients, uh, put clients in, in the mindset that they need to be in or, um, or that, you know, help me find, you know, what are the good clients and what are the not good clients and, and kind of filter for that. I'm going to talk about that <clears throat> in this live. So hopefully this will be helpful uh, to some people. If you um, are not sure if you want to do the SEO uh, client route, then um, this live is definitely for you. Or if you're having trouble with clients, um, being, you know, asking for too much and, um, you know, try, being too demanding, then I think this is also for you. Okay, so uh, uh, the first thing that I do is to have an agreement. And this might sound pretty simple, um, and I have very simple agreements. And this is less about, like, a contract to, uh, to have them be on for X number of months. And this is more about an explicit outline of what they're paying me for and what my responsibilities are and what their responsibilities are because they have responsibilities as well. And I want to be clear on that uh, because if this is going to really help with some of the other stuff that I'm going to do, this is going to lay the groundwork because if they ask for something that's not in the agreement, then you are well within your rights to politely and professionally say no. Um, and there's nothing they can do because you sent them the agreement. They said yes and they paid and therefore they cannot, you know, they might ask you and you can say, you know, that's not really something I offer, um, which is a, 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 a theme that you'll see throughout here. Uh, let's see. I mean, it, and it, it doesn't it doesn't have to be, again, the best agreement in the world. Uh, I have I give my agreements, my exact agreements that I paid a lawyer, uh, I don't know, five hundred dollars to build several years ago. And I give those exact agreements that I give my clients in in the SEO client attraction system course. Um, also, it is their month to month. Um, I know a lot of people they make try to make people do six month and twelve month agreements, and that's totally fine. I I try to do that more of like a, a handshake agreement. Um, and the reason for that is number one, if someone does someone even with like a contractual agreement, that doesn't mean that they're gonna actually pay you. It uh, doesn't mean that they're gonna that they're not gonna go. Sorry, we're just gonna not pay you anymore, or we're just gonna stop. Um, and and then okay, if they do that, are you gonna get lawyers involved? I'd prefer not to. Uh, so I prefer just to kind of get a handshake agreement and get an idea. And ultimately, sometimes the you know business situation changes, so I want to be sensitive to that. Okay, here is um, one of the biggest things, and this is a common thing, especially in like the tech world. It's called scope creep, where. Uh, you, you define a project and the client asks for more and more and more and you just are trying to acquiesce to them. Um, but what you, this is a really good word to use in a lot of different circumstances. Um, and if a client is really behaving badly um, or you know, they're really asking for too much, you can, you can just say, that's outside the scope of the project. Uh, that's outside the scope of our agreement. Um, this is why the agreement is important. Um, you can always just point to the agreement. You've got the agreement. It's there. It's not. It's unambiguous. You say this is not within the scope of what you're hiring me to do. Um, and this is a good way to, you know, this. It, I've never had anyone be able to really argue with, uh, with this, uh, with, 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 uh, you know, when I tell tell them, hey, this is outside the scope. Okay. Uh, this is a big one, and I know a lot of people will disagree, and there's definitely some validity to to uh, a, uh, taking the opposite, taking the a different approach than what I take. And so this is SEO versus what I would call like digital marketing or general digital marketing. Okay, uh, if you are just providing SEO, 
um, it's a lot easier to say now because you're they're, they're not really expecting you to kind of provide a broad series of of consulting of services um, on the other hand if you are a broad digital ma marketing agency they kind of think of you as their bitch a little bit more and there's a it's a lot easier to kind of have a scope creep it's a lot harder to define a, a very explicit agreement um, and they're probably less clear on what exactly it is you're doing and as a result they're going to ask for a bunch of weird things um, I, I'm definitely a big fan of just focusing on SEO. I do know that the other things, there's other things that can't help. I'm not saying they can't help. I'm not saying they can't be useful. Um, and they can definitely work well together. You know, you can combine ads with SEO and that, that can work great. Um, it can amp actually amplify the SEO. But by, you open yourself up to a lot of issues by not doing uh, digital marketing, by, by not doing, uh, focusing on one service you know, you, that one service could be Facebook ads. I, I just know SEO. Uh, furthermore, um, th there's just a whole host of benefits, especially if you're just getting started out. You know, you don't want to try to learn all the all that there is about digital marketing right out of the gate. That's going to be that's a recipe for disaster. Um, focus on one skill, one service that you can provide, and really just try to knock that out of the park. Okay, this is something. <laughs> I like this picture. Uh, th this is something that I did uh, poorly at first. Uh, for the first couple years of my agency on my website, I actually had my cell phone number, um, and I don't, I don't so much regret it. Is it was obviously the wrong decision. It is so worth it to have like a business number. Um, I used to do Skype, but they changed how they do their thing, and it's just you can't use, really use Skype anymore. It was, it's really ridiculous. I don't want to get into it. Uh, I use uh, Ring Central. I'm not saying that they're the best. There's tons of other good options, but um, it, they just kind of get the job done, and I answer my phones at my desk. And so when I'm like with my family or on vacation, um, no one calls my cell phone. I don't want clients calling my cell phone, especially because the cell phone gets so much spam. Um, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, uh, you know, filter out the client calls. Um, and also it just means that if something comes through, it's much more likely, it, well, I do get a little bit of spam calls to my, my direct business number, uh, it is much less likely that it's spam. Um, also, this is part of the scope of the relationship. You know, they, they don't they don't have access to me twenty four seven. Absolutely not. That is a, again, that's a recipe for hating your job. You know, you just make it clear uh, that I do answer my phone. If you call me during regular working hours, generally I'll I'll answer or I'll call you back if you leave a message, or or even if you don't. Sometimes. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let's again move my face around. Oh wait. Do a better job of that. Okay, uh, simple organic results reporting. Okay, this is a big one um, that took me a while to figure out and a while to kind of nail down what really matters here. Um, first of all, um, you don't. In my opinion, and this is this is something that I say to them, you don't want to spend a lot of time on reporting because reporting doesn't actually help your website rank. That's a critical understanding. I want to say that again. Reporting doesn't actually help your website rank. And sometimes I want I, I like pause or I repeat it. I want you to think about that. Okay. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to be held accountable. But what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the results that really matter. And that's organic rankings and organic traffic. And I tell them this ahead of time, oftentimes even before they close. because I want, And then I also tell them right after they close and if they ask me. Um, and, you know, they're – so generally, I try to keep this really simple and quick and to the point. Um, it, it, there are exceptions if there's some major issues, if there's a major fall or, you know, at, at critical, like at long-term junctures, like at the six-month mark, I'll do a little bit more detail. But even then, I try to keep it pretty pretty simple and light. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that I don't report on, uh, and that is intentional. And it, it's and also, you know, if they ask for more often reports, it's just no. I've had clients say, you know what, I'd like reports more, more often. No. I mean, obviously, I don't say it quite so rudely, but yeah, no. Check for any questions. Okay, no questions. Um, and then here's another one. And to filter out before the sale. It is okay for you to say no. Now, I understand that if you're just getting started, it's going to be a lot harder for you to say no. You want the cash. It's part of the training process. Maybe you have to have a couple of bad clients. I think that's probably something you should expect, that you will have a, a few bad clients. So don't worry if like you make a mistake on this. It'll help you see it better in the future but you want there's a few things that 
you might want to, um, if they, if you do see it, um, you might want to price in like kind of like a, like a high maintenance client. And sometimes I'm looking for this and, and if I see certain things, I'll, I'll, it, it's a way of kind of filtering them out, but also if they do hire you, um, making sure that they pay you extra. So every once in a while they'll ask for my cell phone and I say, no, I don't give that out. Um, I mean, again, I make that very clear. It's drawing very discreet lines on, not discreet, but drawing very explicit lines on what I do and what I don't do, what I offer and what I'm not offering. Um, ask for more frequent reporting. Um, I mentioned this before. Also, something I didn't put in here, which was uh, asking for too much detail on exactly what I do, especially with regards to like link building. You know, I, I try to describe it at a high level. This is what I tell, I, you know, I try to describe this at a high level, but this is such a deep rabbit hole that it's not really something we're going to go super deep in, you know, at a high level, here's some things, here's some strategies that I, that I go about doing, but I'm not going to, I'm, you're not paying for SEO training. That's what I tell them. I'm not, I mean, you're not hiring me to train you on how to do SEO. That's a whole other thing. That's a completely different service offering that I'm not offering you right now. Um, one of the biggest things to me that really spells out that they're probably going to be a low value client is if they want if in like the first sentence or the first paragraph of their communication they say uh so what what's it going to cost the sooner they get to what's it going to cost the less likely they are to be a high value client um or ask for hourly this is along the same lines if they I, I, every single time someone has pushed you know not not necessarily ask but the more that they kind of harp on this point the more they like oh well i don't understand why you don't give hourly why wouldn't you give hourly? Uh, I give them my reasons. They're like, I still don't understand. The more that they want to talk about hourly, the more they're wanting to make you their employee, which is not the position that I want to be in. And it's going to make it so that they, it's going to knock down a bunch of other walls that you don't want knocked down. Like, oh, well, I'll call you on your cell phone. Oh, well, I expect you to be available at all times. Stuff like that. Um, that's not what, that's not what I want. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other these. It's hard to list them all. Um, and I, I, again, in the SEO client attraction system course, I do go through a little bit more detail on this. Okay. So I have actually fired clients. Okay. So this is a last resort. Um, and it's pretty rare because all the other stuff I talked about and then, I, and there's one more thing that's my favorite thing that's last, um, is helpful in making it so that, that, that you don't have to fire clients as much, but sometimes someone is just, I don't know what, like they're so dense. Um, or they just have this idea in their mind of what, and, and there's, there's no convincing them, uh, of anything and, uh, of, of what should be done. And you tell them, no, no, this is not actually that important. Like they like, oh, I want you to do this. And it's like, no, I'm the SEO expert here. Um, and this is what we're going to do. But I, but I heard that we need to do this. Should we do this? No, I'm staying focused on this. All right. And so, and, and. And probably one of the exa one of the examples of someone who fired me was someone who I was actually giving good results to. <laughs> it was shocking to me. Like we were in, I told him it would take, you know, six months or longer, you know, and, and to really get, and, and, and he had a new site and a competitive niche. And at three months we were, we were actually seeing pretty significant results. Like things were going up pretty rapidly, but for, he, he just kept complaining. He just kept saying, you know, why aren't we seeing, you know, why aren't we seeing faster results? Why aren't we seeing results? I'm like, this is great where we're at. Um, and he just wouldn't listen to me. And, and this is one of the biggest things. Why are you paying me money and not to, to consult you, to tell you, give you my expertise and my experience uh, if you're not going to listen to me? Uh, kind of stupid. So, but sometimes you got to do it. Sometimes, you know, this opens up more opportunities for you when you have a client that just is just probably going to happen. You deal with enough clients, you're going to have to fire them. But it's a very small percentage very very small amount of clients especially when you set it up right when you define the boundaries some people they're not mean they're not they're not trying to 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 push your limits they're not trying to suck your soul they're just they just don't know what the boundaries are and you have to define it clearly they don't understand and that's fine okay here is my uh favorite thing this this is what works to me like super super well um and it, again it, it's it's part uh, you can see a pieces of this and some of the other other parts of it but very explicitly and this is kind of like where um uh, you know if they're really you're finding you're having trouble telling them oh uh, you know you're having trouble getting across to them hey this is not what we want to do um basically some form of let me spend as much time as possible working on your seo and not talking to you okay um if they have a lot of like 
random questions or like I'll get clients that'll send me articles that are dumbass articles from random people. Um, you know, this is what I'll do. Um, sometimes they're also like they try to jump ahead and they say, oh, let's talk about this thing that we're not and we're not at that step yet. Like, oh, um, we will have this discussion at, at X. We will have this discussion in, in a month. OK, that pretty much shuts them up. Um, or um, some form of like if they're asking about, uh, you know, what are we going to do about the image alt tags? Well, um, that's not important. Or right now, X, Y and Z are actually much more important. So that's such a low priority. Uh, you know, talk about priorities and, and, and what, where you get the most bang for your buck with regards to action and mention that, hey, this is not really that, this is not important, okay? Um, I know it may seem important to you, but it's not going to really make a big difference. So I would really, you know, let me focus. Let me focus on getting maximum money, uh, maximum value from the money that you, that you are paying me. That's super, super important. Okay, uh, that's all I got. Uh, let's see if I have any questions. So no questions. <laughs> um, all right, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait here for just a couple minutes, uh, just to see if there's anybody who has any questions who jumps in um, at the last minute or um, any of the, the people that are on right now have any questions. Um, and maybe I'll, I'll I'll chat about some different ideas that I have uh, uh, for for this right here. Um, I'm trying to think of some specific some more specific scenarios because this is this is probably the most common. Um, thing that I run into that requires, and, and this is probably the most common technique that I use. It's, it's so broad. It can be used in so many different circumstances. Basically just like, hey, um, if you want me to make as much money for you as possible, I need to be able to focus. And if you're calling me every other day asking me about this article you read or asking you, you know, to, you know, asking me about random dumb stuff, or not, I wouldn't say dumb, but I would definitely wouldn't say dumb. I would say uh, about this other stuff that's not really important. I'm telling you, it's not important. Um, then it, you're, you're really you're taking you're not enabling me to support you uh, to my maximum ability. Right, something like that um, is going to be uh, uh, very helpful uh, to getting them to be like, oh. Oh, I, I do. I do. I don't, do you want me? Do you want the maximum value for for your money? Um, well, yeah, of course. Who doesn't want the maximum value for the money? Um, and you can kind of, if if let's go back through it, you can apply this to pretty much all of these. Uh, you know, you, you know, you're firing. You're not letting me do the job you hired me to do. Um, so I'm sorry. I can't. You know, I've I've told you multiple times. You know, we've talked about this multiple times. I apologize. It's just we're not a good fit. Uh, filter out before the sale. Uh, you know, I want again. I want to give you. This is a little bit different when you define the parameters of success and what explicitly do, what you're going to do. Then it enables you to do that. Simple organic. This is uh, along the same lines. Like I don't. Again, reporting is not really a huge priority. Um, never cell phone. I, I need to have a life. You know, I can't. You know, I, you know I, there's nothing really in SEO that's like an emergency. Um. Mm, I'm not sure how this applies quite directly. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that doesn't quite apply to this. Uh, the scope creep, definitely. You know, the more we stay away from kind of the areas that give the most bang for your buck, the 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 less value you get. And then defining the explicit agreement. So this is this is critical, and this is uh, my most commonly used thing. Okay. Well, I don't have any questions, so uh, thank you uh, for watching. If you're watching the replay i guess that's what they call it or the uh or, or you're live i appreciate you coming on and let me know if you have any questions have a great day bye